Hello friends, welcome to this second video on operation on set theory. Normally, what do we mean by operation? When there are going to be a collection of n elements, if you want to further do some uh, calculation based on them, then we will need some operators which can operate on them and give us an output for us. Like basic uh, operations for mathematics can be stated as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and so on. They act on numbers and they are going to produce outcomes which are uh, desired results. In set theory, what we have is going to be a collection of objects. So whenever we have objects which are not going to be number, which can be something like a lion, cat, tiger and so on, or it can be pink, red, yellow and colors and so on. So whenever they are going to be non-numerical, how to operate on them? So we will see on operators which can operate on your set theory. Okay, so we move on to the next thing to get introduced to the basic operations which are available in set theory. Let u be the universal set and if a is going to be any set and b is also going to be any set out of it. Then we read a union b to be a union b. This symbol with u sign is going to be union b is containing all elements that are going to be in a or in b so it is something like your or operator which we use in our logic gates either a or in b or it can be in both so how do we denote them by our set builder notation a union b is going to be equal to set of all x such that x either belongs to a or it belongs to b next is the symbol with an ulta ulta of u like an n you call it as a intersection b so what does this intersection mean to us it contains all elements that belong to both a and b so it is nothing but just our and operator which we use in our logic gates a and b so only if both of them are on then there will be an output over here so we call this to be intersection operator you denote it as set of all x such that x belongs to a and x belongs to b the next thing which we have over here is a to the power of c or a with an prime on top or a with a bar on top you call it as complement of a which are nothing but con collection of all elements which are going to be not in a so they are a part of the universal set but they don't belong to the set a in which case you call them to be complement of a two sets a and b are called disjoint if they have no element in common so if they are not going to have any element in common what they are referred as disjoint so what will be the number of elements which is going to be contained both a and b if they are disjoint there are going to be no elements in common so intersection will be empty so this is a condition for disjointness a intersection b is always empty when the sets are going to be disjoint now we will see how these things work using some numerical examples so that you will get to know about these um, operators in a better way or better understanding the easy way to grasp all these things are using some pictorial representation and we know that a brain can process fast when it is seeing it things as pictures so we use something called as when diagrams to represent these relations so this universal set when i have i usually make use of something like this with a square or a rectangle to represent the collection of all so this is going to be your universal set make sure that you differentiate your universal set with your union symbol so that you don't get confused with it so if a is going to be a set inside it then this set is a collection which i am going to denote it by a circle this collection is going to be a a is a set and it is going to be a subset of the universal set so b is going to be one more set so this is also a subset of your universal set so a and b are going to be universal sets subsets 
सो वेन आई से ए एंड बी ए एंड सॉरी दिस इज गोइंग टू बी ए एंड बी सो एलिमेंट्स विच आर कॉमन टू ए एज वेल एज एलिमेंट्स दैट आर कॉमन टू बी सो हाउ विल आई राइट दैम सो लेट दिस बी माई यूनिवर्सल सेट यू एंड लेट मी हैव एन ए ओवर हियर सो लेट दिस बी माई ए एंड लेट मी हैव माई बी ओवर हियर लेट दिस बी माई बी आई वॉन्ट एलिमेंट्स दैट आर गोइंग टू बी बोथ सो दिस मीन्स बोथ फॉर मी बोथ ए एंड बी सो वेर इज गोइंग टू बी द पार्ट विच कंटाइंस बोथ ए एंड बी सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द पोर्शन दैट कंटाइंस बोथ ए एंड बी एंड वेन इट इज गोइंग टू बी ए यूनियन बी अ कलेक्शन दैट टेक्स ए और बी सो हाउ विल यू रेप्रेजेंट दैट बाय सो यू हैव द सेम यूनिवर्सल सेट लेट मी ड्रॉ माई ए एंड लेट मी हैव माई बी so when i have a a and this is going to be b elements that are either in a or in b so either in a they are going to be part of a so i take this portion of a they are also either in b they are also be going to be portion of b so i can also extend them to include portions of b so either a or b a union b how will this look like so it is a collection of a and b both of them okay a a or they are going to be a part of b so this is how we represent union using your venn diagram and this is the way in which we represent intersection in our venn diagram and moving on to the third one whenever i am going to have my set universal set u and this is going to be my set which is going to be a so what is the third operator which we saw over here you call it as complement elements that are going to be in your universal set but they are not going to belong to does not belong to a so they are portion of the whole but not in a so where are they going to lie they are going to lie away from a apart from a whatever is going to be the collection which i can take from the universal set so this is what you call it by the name complement okay so you write it either with a with a c on top or you can write it with a with a prime on top or you can write a with a bar on top okay what do you call this as you call this as complement so this is how we can represent the relationship between sets using pictorically and we call this by the name called as venn diagram so now let us move on to have some uh, problems which can define them so let a be the set which is going to be the collection 1 2 3 let b be the set the collection 2 3 4 let me have a union b collection of elements of a or b so it can either be in a or in b so i will take elements of b now when i take elements of b 2 2 is already being over here represented so don't take it again so it is a unique collection like you don't have repetition of objects over here this 3 and this 3 are the same so you don't take it twice okay and so the other left out quantity over here in b is going to be 4 so either a or in b so either a or in b so the collection will have 1 2 3 and 4 when i write it as a intersection b so a and b so both it has to be in a as well as in b so one is present here but it is not present here so i cannot take one two is present here yes it is also present here so i will take two which is going to be both in a and b next three is yes, three is over here and also over here so i'll take it over here moving on to the next one four it is in b but not a part of a so i cannot take it so the intersection will contain both a and b will contain two elements in common which is given by 2 and 3 so now if i define my universal set to be use the collection of 1 2 3 4 and 5 and i have already defined my a to be equal to 1 2 1 3 what can you say about a complement a is complement are elements of u but are not in a so belongs to u they does not belong to a so these elements 1 2 3 which are going to be in a are going to be slashed off 
So what is left out is going to be 4 and 5 which are going to be your part of your complement. So this is how this condition or this um, operator on uh, complement operates. Moving on to the next operators, we have uh, the difference operator which is going to be read as A difference B or relative complement of B of A with B with respect to A. That is nothing but elements which are in A but not in B. So you read it as collection of all X such that X belongs to A, X does not belong to B. So from A you scrap off all the elements of B, whatever is left out then you call them as difference. So let us have the collection A to be 1, 2, 3 and B to be the collection 1, 3, 5, 7. From A, I scrap off elements of B. What are the elements of B? 1. Okay, I scrap off 1. Next is going to be 3. I scrap off 3. 5. I don't have a 5. I don't have a 7. So what is left out in A after removing all the elements of B? I just have this 2 over here. So A minus B is going to be 2. And what about B minus A? From B, you scrap off elements of A. So B is going to be equal to 1, 3, 5 and 7. And from here, you scrap off elements of A. 1 is scored off. 2 is not here. 3 is scored off. So what is left out is going to be 5 and 7. So B minus A is going to be 5 and 7. So what do we say over here using our Venn diagram is this is going to be my universal set U. And then I have a bigger set which is going to be my um, B and from this B I am going to remove my set called as A. So when I am removing this A from my B what will be left out for me? The left out portion is going to be this one over here like a donut. So this yellow portion represents B from which a has been removed b minus a okay so this is going to be your b minus a when i want it to be a minus b how will i represent this as when it is a minus b the bigger set is going to be your a and the smaller one is going to be your b and when you remove elements of b from a you will have this left out portion over here so this is the portion this is nothing that represents a minus b Okay, next we move on to the last one called as symmetric difference. What is meant by symmetric difference? It is going to be a combination of A minus B and B minus A and then you take the union of both of them. So you write it with a symbol plus and then encircle it. So it is a combination of both A minus B and B minus A. Collection of elements either they are in A minus B or in B minus A. So let us have an example. A is going to be the set A, B, C, D and B is C, D, E, F. What can we say about A minus B from my A? A, B, C, D. I am removing B. Removing B. C is there. Yes, C is removed. D is there. D is removed. E is not there. F is not there. So my A minus B is going to be A comma B. Now from my B, which is C, D, E, F. I am going to remove my A. So I want B minus A. So what is A? A is here. No, I don't have a A. B, no B. C is removed. D is removed. What is left out is going to be E and F. Now I have a A minus B and I also have a B minus A. I take the union of both of them. So my A plus circle B, you call it a symmetric difference B, is going to be the collection A comma B comma E comma F. So this is the union, the collection either in A minus B or in B minus A, which is represented in this way. So how do we denote this uh, in a pictorial way? So using your Venn diagram, let this be your universal set. And let us have a set called as A and this is going to be my set called as um, B. So this is my B, A minus B. From A you remove the part of B. So when you from A you remove the part of B, what are the left out portions? This is my left out portion. And similarly from B, when you remove the parts of A, parts of A, what is the quantity left out? This is the left out. So this portion 
shaded part is nothing but your a symmetric difference b so in this way we can represent the set using pictorial way called as venn diagram and uh, this is how helps uh, uh, venn diagrams helps us to identify or uh, uh, visualize how the collection is going to be and uh, we can uh, effectively apply these operators to perform operations on the given sets thank you very much